Hello, race fans. It's K8BYP on a nothing is happening day on the air. Nothing but noise. So let's talk about lightning. Let's talk about myths about grounding for lightning protection. There's been a couple commenters that know this myth, and there's no such thing. Megavolts, ten thousands of amp. Don't think your Mickey Mouse ground wire is going to make a bit of difference. The image you're looking at is at the 15-foot level of a utility pole, and you're looking at a code violation. You may not recognize the violation, but I do. The story here was that lightning hit a tree about 20 feet away. It coupled enough energy into the phone lines going into a house through the phone wires to my computer that was across the house and literally disintegrated part of a modem board. So this was a direct strike on the tree. The tree was burnt. And the interesting part about the picture is that the code violation is, and it's not written in the code, it falls under uh, doing workmanlike work. It also illustrates the fact <clears throat> that we are not allowed just to read the code as a hobbyist, a mechanic, an electrician, any of the above, because the code does not allow us, if we're not educated in science and engineering, to use the code. The code is not an assembly or an instruction manual for an electrician. And electricians are not qualified nor legally permitted to read the code and contrary to a troll that got banned from here, there's no such thing as interpreting the code. We don't interpret the statement that we are forbidden to reground it to load. There's no interpretation there. It's a clearly forbidding installing additional ground rods, period. No interpreting it away. The code violation in this picture is that someone connected a <laughs> number six ground wire that's going down well, 15 feet of utility pole to a ground rod. And in the process, it violated code by putting staples to hold the wire. Well, that's fine. But you can see at the focus of this big black spot, they bent the wire. That is a code violation because it causes a great increase in inductance at that point, and that high-speed transient can't go through that inductance, so it arced over to the pole. And if it was raining, the pole's wet, and the pole may be a better conductor than that skinny wire. This goes to illustrate that there's no such thing for gr as grounding for lightning <laughs> because of the very high inductive reactance in 15 feet of number six wire. To a high-speed lightning transient, which is RF of several megahertz, that's an open circuit. The purpose of that ground is not lightning. In fact, National Electric Code, or we might improperly say Residential Code, has nothing to do with lightning, doesn't refer to it, and nowhere in any seat does it refer to grounding for lightning except for grounding towers, and it doesn't say lightning, but that's what it means. Notice the big black spot that's focused at where that wire turns a corner and goes down. Notice the branches coming off that black spot, how they're pointing to nearby mounting plates. See the red arrows? The long red, the, the long red line with the arrow points to the, the code violation, which is a bend in the wire. If you look closely, there was extreme overheating in the wire there at that bend. But the short red arrow points to a branched feature, very similar to branch streamers and lightning discharges pointing to a bracket up there, and that bracket is what holds the high line, the hot line. So that's presumably where it hit the top conductor, which is grounded, and jumped over to the high line, which then coupled over to the house, to the communication line. If you think you're going to stop that with a Mickey Mouse ground rod and your Mickey Mouse wire from your Mickey Mouse ham shack, you are simply delusional. That discharge tried to eat a pine tree for lunch. It doesn't care about your pitiful ground rod. Now, there are two aspects to this code grounding and lightning thing.
firstly, the code requirement that what you do must work. And secondly, that you are qualified to do it. And no radio amateur, no matter who they are, not even an engineer, not even a PE, and I'm the first but not the latter, none of us are legally permitted to install ground rods, which constitutes a modification of a commercial power service, without approval of a local code authority. So it doesn't matter if you know everything there is no about grounding and lightning, you're not allowed to do it without approval. And that's what's always left out of grounding presentations. But just for fun, I figured the inductance in uh, 15 feet of number six copper wire, which is two tenths of an inch diameter. I used the commandy.com calculator, which comes out to be seven microhenry. And at one megahertz, assuming that's related to lightning discharge, that's 44 ohms reactance. If there's an attempt to pass a 10,000 amp pulse current that comes out to a voltage drop of 439 kV. And I guarantee you, no one in amateur radio is qualified to screw around with that. It's not dangerous, it's deadly. See how it burned the pole? That's a tremendous amount of energy to do that in the context of a lightning discharge, which is maybe micro to milliseconds. That's an awful lot of power. The ground wire on that pole since obviously it did not work, has nothing to do with lightning in general. It has to do with dealing with transients, other transients or line faults. It has to do with the fact that the top side of that transformer may be at 13 kV, and it's dropping down to two 120 volt AC legs, two phase. There are bad things that can happen if there's not a ground connection between the service entrance and the pole. So next view, I'm going to show you the service entrance at my house to illustrate a point.